Okay, so what we're going to do next is create a bridge. And you can copy what I do or create your own unique design, do a Google image search to see some examples. Okay, so here we are over in Inventor, and I'm going to go ahead and start up a 2D sketch. I'll do this on the XY plane. And over here in my sketching tools, underneath lines, there's a whole bunch of different lines. There's curved splines, bridge curve. It's not really for bridges. This is for connecting curved lines so that you can get a nice smooth transition between two curved lines. What we're going to pull up is the equation curve. Click on the equation curve and that will bring up this new menu over here and you can type in any equation that you want there's a few equations in the notes that you can use so i'm going to put in my equation over here in the y of t area and you have to define how far that equation is going to go so i'm going to go from zero to a thousand click on here and let me just zoom out so here is my arch and you can read through some notes and see information on what types of arches are a good fit for bridges. Next, I need to make a closed loop to extrude for my bridge. I'm going to create a construction line with my offset command. Some of these objects like offset and the arrays, they can sort of fight you when you're trying to trim objects and a few other things. So I'm going to create this first offset with um, just a construction line. And then I'm going to turn it back to a regular line and create an arc just over the top of that with a construction line as a guide. And this is just, it'll be easier to, um, to trim and to manipulate at the end of this thing. Next, what I'm going to do is create a road surface. If you want to line things up, one little trick that you can do is kind of hover over the point, and then as you pull it down, it'll actually kind of attach itself to the end that you started with. So hover over what you want to align it with, and then bring it down. I'm going to go ahead and make the road surface 20 thick, which is the same amount that the, our offset was. And then we can use the trim tool and delete off. Now it's showing one black line that's showing us where our axis is and another line that is the top of the road surface. So don't, it is actually cut here, even though it doesn't look like it because we're on the axis. Next, let's go ahead and close these initial loops. So I'm going to right click on the line, come over here and close loop and walk around these guys. So yay, my outside is now successfully closed. And don't start with too complicated of a pattern here because every little corner is going to fight you when you're trying to line those up to extrude the thing. The next thing I would like to show you is how to import Excel points. So I've created this Excel document already. And what I've got in here is this is my column for X values. This is my column for Y values. And these will, I'm going to pull these in just as points and create a few little supporting cables with them. So an Excel file, all that's in there is numbers, and the first column is X, the next is Y. Start with cell A1. So there's that one. Remember where you save it. Up here under Sketch, look for Points, and you just click on Points. It even gives you a little description of how it likes the Excel file to be formatted. So X first, and then Y. And you're just going to grab that file that you created. And there's the points that it's pulled in. Now, I only created points for half the bridge because we have this great mirror command over here. So we can always just do half the bridge and mirror it over to the other side. So that's importing points. And you can take any of those old trust structure Excel files that you created. Notice we did not have to use concat here. 
the, the Excel points were just one column for X, one column for Y, so we didn't have to change it over for X comma Y. You can just keep it in two different columns, which is nice and convenient. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add some rectangles where our points were. Not going to do anything too fancy here. Just keep it simple. That's it. Every corner you make is going to be hard to line up. So just a few rectangles. Now we could use a rectangular array at this point, but I'm just going to use the copy command and this will keep each object separate from one another and it just makes it a little bit easier to trim and modify if we have rectangular objects rather than array objects. If you select from right to left, it's anything that it touches. So there I've selected it for a base point. I'm going to grab the base point as the Excel point. And once I have it, I can just start clicking it around. And again, Inventor automatically adds the snaps. It's so just let everything kind of fall and snap into place. And I'm just going to go halfway over and then use the mirror command. Once I have the rectangles in place, I can come up here and trim it out. For trim, you can individually select each line or just hold down your left mouse button and draw a line through everything. So that's kind of like a fence extrude. And I'm going to go ahead and just highlight a few things and delete a few things. These have dimensions in them. And dimensions are another thing that kind of fights you when you're trying to trim things. So I'm going to erase those out of here and Again, just left mouse click and draw a line through it. And whatever that line crosses, it'll trim out. That's a little bit faster than individually selecting each little segment of line. So you can just draw that right through here. And next up, I'm going to go ahead. And because this is an arch and not an offset line and not an equation line, it's letting me trim all these little segments. So what we want is just one solid closed area. Now down here at the bottom, it's going to be really hard to see what's been trimmed or not because we're right on the top of our coordinate system axes. But hopefully these guys will be trimming out correctly here. I'm zooming in and out by rolling my rolling mouse button. Make sure you have a mouse that has a rolling button on it and then you can <clears throat> at the end you can highlight over your lines so it looks like there's a line here but there's not that's the axis and if you really want to do a good job each of these things we can come around and say close the loops and maybe we don't have to do that for each little segment but it might be safe if you go to extrude it and it's not capturing everything like you want it to capture it, then you're going to want to walk around and close all of your loops. Okay, so once you have these guys together, we can cut this in half. And after it's chopped in half, then we'll use the mirror command. So here's our halfway point. And I'm going to go ahead and trim out everything beyond our halfway point and then use that as my mirror line. So here's the mirror command. First, select everything that you want to copy, which is everything in this case, and then select your mirror line, apply, and done. The very last piece will be, again, walk around this guy one last time to close all the loops. Turn that into a construction line. Okay, so close all your loops and try and get just one continuous area to extrude on here. 
Once you've walked around all your loops and closed them, finish out your sketch and try extrude. Now, it might take a couple of tries before everything is attached the way it can be. So remember, if you're not able to grab this area, if something is not closed, all you have to do is just come back over here to the left-hand side, double-click your sketch, open it up again, and go back and try and fix all those little problem areas. I'm going to go ahead and extrude this out <clears throat> so that it goes across the entire road surface and then I will come in and carve out the middle of it. This will give me both sides of my bridge in one extrude. Otherwise you could copy one side to the other but this seems to be the easiest way to do it. So I've just made a super thick road here. And what I'm going to do is start a 2D sketch here on the road surface. Up here at View, Slice Graphics. And I'm going to come back to Sketch, turn my construction line on, project the geometry of my road surface. This will allow me to draw in a center line so that I can just get everything centered. Turning off my construction line, grabbing a point center rectangle, and I will use my center line to find and center a rectangle. And let's see, I extruded this out. 150. If I make each side 20, that means I should make this one 110. So we just have a centered rectangle for our road surface, and I'm going to take that rectangle, pop it up, and turn it into a void. So try out the different extrudes. You can extrude something as a solid or extrude it as a whole. So that's just carving out the center of our road surface. Okay. And remember, everything that you create is going to be showing up over here in your left hand. So you can always go back, double click on your sketches, reopen it, edit it. So it, it's keeping track of every little thing you do over here. Okay, the next thing we need to do is add some legs on the bottom of this. So I'm going to go ahead and flip them over and start a 2D sketch on the base. Let's see, how should we add legs over here? Let's go ahead and project our geometry again and try out some of our constraint tools. I'm going to draw a circle and I'm just going to draw him kind of randomly out here to the side. How large should our legs be? How about a diameter of, I don't know, 40-ish? 40 looks about good. And what I'm going to do here, let's see, I forgot to turn my construction line off. If you just click on your object and then click on construction line, so you can go back and forth between construction and regular lines here. So there's a whole bunch of different constraints up here that you can move things into place. So let's go ahead and constrain this circle so that the top of it is flush with one of the sides of our bridge. So there we go. Now it's up and flush with the bridge. Next, I want to bump that leg over. Let's see, if he has a diameter of 40, I don't want him right up against the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and draw something. What should we do here? Let's go over 30. And then I'm going to just make a little construction line here that we can snap him onto. So over here, as well as snapping the center, and again, just hover your cursor over the different tools here, and you can see what they do. So what we want to do is constrain the center of this circle to this line over here. So see how you can take an object and you can line it up to a side or to a line. 
So try out a few of these different constraint tools. You can make two lines parallel to one another or perpendicular to one another, symmetrical. So walk around all of these different constraint tools because they come in pretty handy. Okay, now that we have one leg in, we want it to be symmetrical and mirrored over to the other side. So I'll go ahead and create some mirror lines over here. So I have projected my geometry, so I already have some lines that I can snap to. So I can hover my cursor until I get the green center points. So there's a couple of mirror lines. Here's my mirror command, select my circle, select my mirror line, apply done, and mirror again. This time I'm going to select this and this mirror line to the center, apply, and done. So there's my legs. And I'll go ahead and finish that sketch out and extrude all of these guys. I've got four different objects to extrude, so just walk around and grab each of them. And we can extrude those right down like that. OK. Shall we extrude it in both directions? Just give a nice little end to it. Maybe we'll extrude it in both directions. Make sure you have it solid and hit OK. So there's, there's a simple little arch bridge. The next step is going to be decide on a material and a couple different ways to test the strength of it. I'm going to do one more thing before we go into the stress analysis environment, and that is to create a load block in the center of the bridge. So I'll do that by starting a 2D sketch on the road surface. And I might as well center this guy. So I'll go ahead and project my geometry, create a center line. And I'm just going to put a rectangular loading block right in the center of my bridge. And this is an area that I can apply a force to. So this could be a big truck. It could be just kind of the worst case scenario. This is going to be where the largest moment arm is. So finish sketch, extrude it up. So this is just some little car, something that we can load something on. Okay, so just a little, a little bit of guy on there that we can add a force to. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and head on over to our environments tab. This is where we have our stress analysis tools. Go ahead and click on stress analysis and create a study. There's a couple different options here. Modal analysis will analyze the natural frequencies of your bridge. So Google Tacoma Narrow Bridge if you want to know why natural frequencies are important. Up here is a static load analysis. So dead weight versus live weight, I guess you could say. Let's start with a simple static analysis and say OK. We're going to go ahead and work our way left to right through here. Before it can analyze the stress, we have to assign it a material. So what are we going to make this out of? Inventor comes with an entire materials library. So there's concretes and metals, aluminum, iron. You could make a gold bridge if you want, or a glass bridge. So scroll through this nice big library. Let's see, what shall we make it out of? Let's Let's just try a standard steel. So I'm going to come over here and hit this arrow to add steel to it. Right click and say assign to selection. And you can see that it actually picks up the coloring of the materials that you've chosen as well. So there's our steel bridge and we can hit OK. Next up, right now this bridge is just floating around in the air. We need to add some boundary conditions and ground it somehow. So over here for fixed, I'm going to say 
The bottom of our little legs are going to be fixed to the ground, all four of them. Apply. And we need to, of course, add a load to this thing and see how it's going to hold up under pressure. You have options of either adding a pressure that acts on an entire surface of something or a concentrated load or a single point load, a force. I'm going to choose a point load and I will apply that load on our loading block that we've created and I'll go ahead let's give it a nice big force so we can see some destruction here I'm gonna put in maybe 10,000 pounds that's that's pretty big but that'll show us some some deforming bridges and after you add the load on here you can see that arrow showing where that's applied. We can also add gravity. The old rock bridges, just holding them up over gravity was a big deal. We'll have to define the direction. To define the direction, all you have to do is just grab a little edge, and that will define gravity as acting down. So there's a couple different loads for it. One point load in the center and the other load denotes gravity, just trying to hold itself up under its own weight. The next thing we're going to do is create a mesh. What this is doing is breaking our solid into a bunch of elements. It's essentially a large network of springs. If you've ever seen a stress strain diagram, that first elastic region of the stress strain diagram, which is what you want to design for, linear is like F equals KX. It's a linear relationship between stress, which is force, and KX. Strain is the how much the thing is stretched out. Okay, so we're we're breaking it up into a bunch of elements and using elastic modulus to define how much it's going to deform. Once we have this all set up, one thing about the mesh view, and I'm just going to leave it as generic. The smaller the mesh size, the more accurate it's going to be, but the more likely you will crash your computer. So keep it large at first, and then if you want to see something in a little bit more detail, we can go back later and really tighten up the mesh in the problem areas if you want to. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit simulate, run, and we'll see what it does. Ooh, got quite a bit of de deformation happening here. Along the left-hand side, you can see your stress analysis. This is everything from stress in the x direction, stress in the y direction, shear, y, y. So these are all the principal directions for stress. You also have the von Mises stress, which is kind of an average of all of those directions. We also have displacement. So how much this guy is displacing in all the different directions and the overall strains in each of the directions. And you will learn about all of this stuff when you take your mechanics and materials classes and statics. So we have quite a lot of information here. I'm going to go ahead and come up to the von Mises stress. And let me show you another neat little feature. Right up here under Animate, you can turn this into a little movie that will show you how this thing is progressively deforming. So pretty neat. We also have probes that we can put in place, so these can show us either click on any point you want to and it'll show you that, or you can look at the max and the min. Okay, and then if that wasn't enough over here for report, and I'm not going to click on this because it's quite a large report, it actually writes the entire report for you. It gives you all the stress and strain analysis and so it's pretty pretty neat. This 
this kind of technology, this used to be very high tech and hard to get this information, grad level stuff. And now with just a few clicks of your mouse, anybody can do this for any structure. So it's this is an amazing new thing that's only recently available to you guys. So pretty fun stuff. As we're talking about natural frequencies, here is a very famous bridge disaster. This is the Tacoma Narrows Bridge up in Washington. It was opened on July 1st, 1940. It collapsed November 7th of the same year, so just a few months later. And in the meantime, it received the nickname Galloping Gertie. So what is happening here? Why is the bridge acting like this? If you look at the side of it, the side of the bridge is flat, not very aerodynamic. So a little bit of wind comes up, it catches this thing like a giant sail, and there's trouble. And of course, in 1940, they did not have inventor software. They could not analyze the structure for natural frequencies yet. This was a state-of-the-art bridge when it was built. It was the third longest suspension bridge in the world. So. It was quite a tragedy to have this destroyed. 1940, what comes to mind when you think 1940? This is the beginning of World War II. The interesting thing for this bridge collapse is that they made money off of demoing the metal from this bridge. So because it was World War II and metal had a very high price, it wasn't a horrible tragedy anyways. Only one dog died after the bridge collapsed and the scrap metal was resold and they actually made money off of the thing. Another bridge was constructed. It wasn't finished until 1950. But if you take some civil engineering courses, you'll probably watch this video over and over again. So again, just know that it's not till very recently that we've been able to analyze natural frequencies so easily. Think through how you would redesign the bridge so that it wouldn't catch the wind. So what would you do to this thing so that it wasn't a giant sail? You could put holes in the thing. It won't catch the wind as well if the wind can blow right through it, right? Or if the side isn't flat, if you make the side round like the front of an airplane wing, that would help so it wouldn't catch the wind very well too. So lots of different design considerations that you don't initially think of when you're putting bridges into place. This was, yeah, the professor, he was trying to save a dog that was in that, that car, and that was the only casualty of this thing was that, that poor little dog in the car. If you ever come across a situation like this where you see a bridge acting strangely, it's your job as an engineer to tell everybody it's not safe and they need to get off of it. I'll wait here. There's a couple more minutes, and you can see the actual collapse of the thing. It's quite amazing how much elastic deformation happens before the final collapse occurs. And for these large bridges, the metal actually does elastically deform quite a bit as the ground settles and wind blows and but it was pretty impressive to see how much it stretches out before it does finally break. Here's another interesting web page to look at when you're considering bridge design. This is a list of bridge failures, and it has a nice little table here. It has the bridge, location, the reason for the failure, number of casualties, type of bridge, and a little pattern you can see developing here, okay, is the reason for the bridge failures. So here's a bridge that failed from a bunch of attackers running across it. So a bunch of people. People are actually a horrible load to design for. Here's another bridge that was overloaded by spectators during a wedding. Overloaded by a festival. 500 to 1,500 people killed when this bridge failed. Here's another one. Bridge overloaded by thousands of people running from a bayonet charge. 
That thing where they say don't march over a bridge, everybody marching in step, that's another way to get that resonant natural frequency going. 4,000 people killed. No good. Here we go. Unbalanced load and vibrations by subjects singing to honor the Duke. 55 drowned or frozen to death. All of these bridge failures are due to crowds of people. So again, as an engineer, if you see a crowd of people on a structure that are overloading it, it's your job to get those people off of that structure. Here we go. Mechanical resonance caused by marching soldiers. Don't march across a bridge. Only 20 injured in that one. People crowded onto a bridge over a river to see a clown go down the river in a barrel. Their weight shifted as the barrel passed underneath. Suspension chains snapped. Cable versus chain. Why would you use a cable over a chain? You know the old medieval bridges and the big chain draw bridges. What's that saying about chains? They have a weak link. They really do have a weak link. That's a bummer. 79 people drowned, mostly children. Okay, so read through the list of bridge failures. Some interesting stuff there about what happened and some good design lessons to learn. Okay, I'm going to finish out of the stress analysis, go back to environments, and start up a new analysis. Create a study, and this time we're going to do a modal analysis. The number of modes, so there's, there's mo multiple frequencies that can catch it and it can like to, to vibrate around. Eight is probably fine. If there's a specific frequency range you're after, so you know what kind of vibrations are going to hit that road from the trucks rumbling over it or what types of wind or waves hitting the thing. So if there's some particular frequency range that you're, that you're interested in, you can fill those in. So we're going to go ahead and say modal analysis 8. And again, we already assigned our material, so we don't need to do that. We do need to fix our boundary conditions. So again, ground this guy at the base, apply. And then we can go ahead and simulate. And this is going to see what kind of frequencies it likes to vibrate around. And here's the first frequency, second, all the way up to eight different vibrational modes that it's going to like to do. And this is really fun to, to turn on the animation. Grab it at a couple of different angles so you can really tell which way that wave is going. And as you're watching these things flop around, think through what designs you could do to stop it from vibrating like this. Okay, so there's the first node. Let's look at this other frequency, 14.62 hertz. Okay, so I'll go ahead and stop that and open up the next. Ooh, that looks like a kind of an interesting guy. So there's the next frequency. And this is all structures have a natural frequency from a wine glass. If you were to ding a wine glass with your fingers and listen to what sound it makes, that sound is created by the frequency it vibrates at. Or let's look at the next one. Let's say you're driving down the road and your car hits 55 miles an hour or 60 miles an hour or something and it just starts to shake. That would be the natural frequency for your car. Wow, there's some kind of interesting little waveforms there. So just depending on which way the wind is blowing and what kind of earthquake is hitting it or who knows what. But if it starts and hits that, that frequency, it's going to resonate with the thing and just rip it apart. Okay, so that's another fun thing that you can do with these. The next step is after you've seen how it's going to fail and how it's going to vibrate around, change it. So could I add some I-beams on here? Could I add some guy wires? Is there something I can do to this design to stabilize it? 
And you don't want to add in too much material. The more material you add, the more expensive it gets. So think about inexpensive ways to strengthen it and stop these vibrations and failure zones from happening. What you want is just a homogeneous load, homogeneous stress and strain distributions. And when you look at the frequency analysis, you want frequencies that are going to be far, far away from anything that you'd see with you know, rumbling trucks and wind blowing around and, and natural conditions that this bridge will be under. So have fun with it. Get creative. Don't just copy this bridge. Look at some other bridge designs. Think of something fun. Make an original design and then modify it somehow. And to, to report these simulations, instead of sending me the entire report, go ahead and use your snipping tool and just grab some snips that include like your displacement and a good picture showing various different frequencies and stresses and give me some before and after shots. So original bridge design and then afterwards if you loaded it with the same load have you redesigned it or modified it somehow so that you've you've mitigated any problem areas okay have fun with it